Hello, welcome back to another beginner sci-fi tutorial. In this one, we're going to be making a simple Star Wars ship animation. I have already prepared a scene that is ready for us to animate. So if you want to follow along, there's a download link in the description below. Although, if you want to use your own ship, feel free to do so. You can see on screen the type of result we're aiming for. Let's start animating. So once you've downloaded the scene, you should see the uh, Star Wars ship I've got here, I made earlier. It's a J-Type 327 Nubian. It's got all the textures and uh, everything already set up. And I've already set up the uh, environment lighting as well. It's just a simple HDRI and the stars as a background. And then I made the uh, camera only see the stars but the uh, HDRI light up the scene, so that's how it works. So first off here, what we're going to do is add in a path. So this will dictate how the uh, the ship moves. We're just going to have it be a straight line. It'll just be easiest for this animation, and it'll still look cool. So we're just going to come over here. To the, just uh, make sure to make the path as big as you want, but we don't want it too big, just uh, I think this will be a good enough size. And we're going to come over here to the ship, we're going to come down to the constraint tab, I'm going to add constraint, that is a uh, follow path, we're going to pick the target to be the nerve path, and that's it on there, we're just going to do RZ minus 90. So we can set it facing the correct way. Then we're just going to check this box here, fixed position. So we can do this and have it move along perfectly. So I'm going to come over here to frame zero, keyframe this. We can press I, or we can click this little button here. And we're going to come to the last frame here, move it all the way up to one, and just click this button again. So the next thing we we'll want to do here is press T here, or we can go to right click, interpolation mode, and set it to linear, so it can move along at a constant rate. Easy thing about this is we can change the scale of the path now, and it will go from the very start to the very end, and stay consistent. So the next thing we're going to do here is uh, set up the camera position. So if you downloaded the scene, the camera should uh, already be in this position here. So to help us set up where we want it to be, we're going to op open up a second tab here. Just drag in from the top right of the tab to the left. And then we're going to make this one view through the camera. I'm going to shut down these two tabs with the N. And, uh, so we're going to come to press 7 here. Move to top orthographic view. I'm going to move this one closer and into the middle can see here. Uh, so we're just going to play this. So I think that'll be close enough. So on the first frame, frame zero, I'm going to come here. We'll change it here actually. Just move your Z along to here. And uh, just, I think that'll be fine. Mine's 160. Just press I to keyframe it. Then on the last frame, going to move it all the way over to minus 19 and we'll keyframe that one again. So we'll just check to see how that looks. So it doesn't look too bad but it can be uh, refined more. So I think we'll press come to this clock here and we'll go to the graph editor and we'll see, we'll just drop down this menu here, hide the X, hide the Y. So we're just dealing with the Z. And uh, so we might want to speed it up a little. We can maybe move this up. Maybe move this down, see how this looks. So this is way too fast. By scaling it up. Maybe 
needs to be scaled down. And this one can be moved down a bit to be a bit more linear. So we'll scale this one down a bit more. We'll lift this one up just a touch. So just play around with it to see if you can uh, get the look you want. I'll be back in a second if I find something that I like. So if I just control space on this tab here, I can make it full screen. I just play it now. I think I'm quite happy with this result now. I'll just quickly show you what I've done. So just move this one up just a touch. I don't think I scaled up much either. And uh, so this one's scaled pretty high and it's moved down a touch as well. And I've made the end rotation to be minus 27 instead of minus 19. So it's the ship is more left on the screen and it doesn't rotate as much. So we can get a better result. So now that we've got the camera movement down, we can make the ship rotate a bit to make the movement more interesting. So we'll come here and we don't need two taps now. We can close this one. This is a bit tricky though, so you just gotta try and do this. Just pull from the left to the right, but be on the more or less side of the tab. You can see this. So if we come over here, we press N, we open up our tab here. We just find the rotation we want. So it's a Y rotation. So I think we'll start off, we'll go back to the timeline. We'll go Shift F12 to go to the timeline. Uh, we'll start off like this. I'll try 33, we'll press I here. So it comes across like this and we'll end at maybe rotation of a couple degrees like this. Four, we'll see how this looks. We may want to put it uh, linear again, so we press T, go linear. So I think I want to rotate it just a touch more at the end here. Yeah, that's better. I'll press T there. Press I to keyframe it again. Yep, that's looking more like it. We can check out what it looks like in the EV over here. So just change your render engine with this top tab to EV. Then we'll just click render view and uh, just activate Bloom here. See how it looks like. We'll do shift uh, control space again to go full screen. Yep, so I think that's looking pretty good. So we'll just come over to cycles. And then just check how we'd like our lighting. So we'll just press shift F3 to go to the uh, shader nodes, shader editor even. And uh, we can change the strength of the background if we want to make it brighter. Uh, you may want to do that, but I think I'm quite fine with this, so I'll go back to And also you can change the stars here. You can see them in the background here. Just change the scale if you want more of them. If you want them bigger, you can do this, or you want more of them even again here. If you want them brighter, make sure to change the multiply here. Uh, but I think I'll have this. We could even give the camera depth of field here, so we can make the stars just a bit blurry bit bigger, which might be more Star Wars like. Uh, so if you want to do that, go ahead. But I think I'll just stick with what I have. So before we uh, render, I want to stick a glow on the engine. So just come over here, just delete this with Control X. And we'll just put the image here, plug it in there. And uh, I'll set this up before so it should work fine I think. Uh, we'll see in a second here. So 
we shall just render an image. So we may want just a touch more glow here. We come over here. Maybe put the size up just a little bit. Or even more if you want. Maybe turn the mix down. Yeah, I think we'll I think we'll go with that. And then you can see the motion blur working on the stars in the background. So if you want to change that, just come over here to render properties. And come down here to motion blur. It's currently at 0.52 right now. So you can make it more or less if you want and change uh, how the camera works for it. But I think center and frame will be fine in 0.52. We'll do what we need. Now for rendering, we have to come over here to the output properties tab and come down to output so you can uh, create a folder here to see where we, where, you, where all your frames can go. So I'm just going to create a J type 327 animation folder, double click in it, press accept. Uh, we don't need RGBA, so we'll just go RGB, we'll stick with PNG. And if you want, you can change it to 2560 by 1080 to get that 21 by 9 uh, cinematic black bar look at the top and the bottom. So I think that should be us good to render out the animation now. We'll just, uh, I'll just put the samples to 500. You can play with the samples if you want. We'll change this to open image denoiser. Just render out an image and uh, see how it looks, if it's noisy or not. Uh, you shouldn't really need to touch the data sampling in this one, at least. So I think um, the denoiser should work fine here. So once you're done, you can come here to render animation. And we'll be back at the end of this. So I am here in DaVinci Resolved. Just gonna load up my files so we can check how they look. And yeah, I think that's looking uh, good enough. So if you're having trouble getting to this result, just make sure to comment down below and I'll be more than happy to help you out and see what your problem is. Um, and if you want more of these tutorials, which I'll be making more in the future, probably more advanced ones than this, uh, just make sure to do subscribe for more of these. And yeah, I'll maybe make one on the ETA 2 flying over the Venator video and some of my other videos. Okay, thank you for watching.